Vice President of Corporate Responsibility and Community Affairs for USAA, President of the USAA Foundation Incorporated, and President of the USAA Educational Foundation, Harriet Dominique. Good evening and thank you. Distinguished guests, it's an absolute honor to be here this evening. On behalf of our CEO, Stuart Parker, and our 33,000 USAA employees that absolutely love Junior Achievement, thank you, Linda and Junior Achievement team, for this humbling opportunity. First, congratulations to the esteemed laureates that are being recognized tonight. Mr. Bells, the Cooper family, and Mr. Goff, thank you for all you do to make our community thrive through your business achievements and philanthropic investments. Congratulations on your well-deserved recognition. <laughs> and actually, if I may be transparent, it's a bit intimidating being on the same stage following such notable, iconic leaders like Craig Boyan, Gary Dudley, Charlie Amato, Randy, and preceding our laureates before they come to the stage. But I must admit, and hear me with all respect and admiration to those that I just mentioned, it can't compare to the true reason that I'm here on this stage. I'm so very fortunate to have the privilege of playing a small role in honoring and celebrating the CEO of Junior Achievement, South Texas, Linda Reimer. Tonight, I'd like to cover just three topics briefly, if I may. A tiny bit about USAA, this is not meant to be a USAA commercial about USA's connection to junior achievement, and most importantly, my main focus, Linda Rima, Reimer. First, a tiny bit about USAA, and this is to frame why we support junior achievement. USA was started in 1922, right here in downtown San Antonio, at the Gunther Hotel, by the military community, for the military community. We were built on a legacy of service, and we drive our business aligned to our core values of honesty, integrity, loyalty, and service. Nearly 100 years later, whether through our products, our services, or our corporate philanthropy, we remain laser focused on providing the best service for the military community and their families and striving their financial security, additionally to supporting the communities in which our employees live, play, and work. That makes it a great connection for USAA and JA. USAA has a long history of, the, of support for junior achievement, which Linda reinforced the very first time I met her in 2014. In the early 90s, as the new CEO of JA San Antonio, Linda connected with our then CEO, General Harris, to, correct, to request support for JA. That led to contributions to, to JA, then Jer General Harris served on the board and then actually became chairman of the board for JA. I imagine at that time that General Harris saw in Linda and JA the same thing that holds true today alignment with USAA's core values and mission. JA has an incredible mission to prepare young people to succeed, focused on serving others in the community. And they are also guided by core values of honesty, integrity, respect, and excellence. And the value that JA provides to our community is immeasurable, as they provide young people with the crucial skills needed for lifelong success, including financial literacy, workforce readiness, innovation, and entrepreneurship through programs like JA in a Day, 
Finance Park, and many others. However, in addition to the impact the students and communities that JA serves, there is a direct impact to our USA workforce through the opportunities to volunteer and give back directly to the community through our corporate citizenship programs. And we have several of those USAA volunteers here this evening. And thank you for being here, USAA team. More than providing the opportunity to give back, we also have leaders at USAA who have been served by USA, that have been served by JA. And I have just two quick examples. There's a senior vice president of marketing, Tony Wells. And he says that he participated in JA in the eighth and ninth grade, and that the experience initiated his love for business and has helped him to be a successful business leader of Fortune 500 companies. Also, we have Madeline Perez Rosello, who was served by JA while in Puerto Rico and is here tonight. And she said JA built confidence, public speaking skills, and so many other skills. But let me stop preaching to the choir because I know everybody is here tonight and has no doubt about the benefits of JA and we are all incredibly grateful for the contribution. So a brief thank you to the leadership of Junior Achievement, the board, and all the work that you do. Our community is better because of you. Thank you, JA leadership. Now, Talinda Reimer, current CEO of JA South Texas and 29-year JA leader. Now in those 29 years, Linda has been accountable for so many things. For 19 years, she led various JA chapters across our nation to include Dallas, Colorado Springs, the Bay Area, South Texas, and in those years, every year she impacted over 100,000 lives. 10 years as she led JA, she was responsible for world operations, leading 55 countries and five continents and impacted more than 3 million lives annually. So everybody knows, that knows me knows that I'm not a mathematician, but I did some quick back of the napkin math and, and her 29 years of JA leadership Linda has directly impacted more than 32 million lives. Wow. And you extrapolate that across the positive impacts of her influence in those lives. Her legacy is far reaching and community advancement is mind boggling. What I know about Linda is that her role at JA is her ministry, it's her calling, and she remains connected to her students. In fact, she routinely receives calls and expressions of gratitude for the way she's poured into so many lives. The calls she receives are authors around our nation, nonprofit leadership, business leadership, and your impacts go on and on and on. About Linda personally, I vividly recall the very first time I had the privilege of meeting Linda and I experienced her inner beauty that radiates with this beautiful effervescence, her positivity, her quiet yet powerful strength, her peace and grace, and her humility and faith. And in preparing to talk about Linda this evening, because I had to get it right, because of all that she has done for our nation and world, I wanted to share two of my favorite leadership passages that convey all that Linda is to me in our world. First, and I'll keep it brief because I know I've probably gone way too long, but Linda is the epitome of a go-giver. This is my very favorite leadership book. It tells the story of this stressed out salesman named Joe that in the beginning of the book, he, success is eluding him, and he's deemed to be a real go-getter. And through five laws for stratospheric success, Joe learns that the only way to true success is by being a go-giver. 
So I don't have time to read all five of those laws. And when I had to decide which one Linda embodies, it was every single one of them. But the one that I want to share with you tonight is the law of value. Your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. And Linda, you've surely added much more value than you could ever be compensated. The other thing that I wanted to share with you, and I promise I'm wrapping up, is my very favorite leadership article. And this is titled, A Leader's Legacy. And it talks about all the things a leader can do as they leave their legacy. And a quote from this article that defines Linda is thinking about legacies requires moving beyond the short-term definition of success. Legacies encompass the past, present, and future and force us to consider where we have been, where we are going, where we have been, where we are now, and where we are going. A quest to leave a lasting legacy is a journey from success to significance. Linda, on behalf of the millions of life you've touched, changed and saved, thank you, thank you, thank you. One of my greatest gifts in my 29-year USA career is the opportunity to know you, work with you, learn from you, and call you my friend. God bless you today and always as we celebrate you and the incredible legacy you are leaving to our world. You are an angel and we are better for you. Thank you. just one more thing on behalf of the USAA team I'd like to present you with the USAA Eagle Award a very high honor from our company this award says USAA with appreciation to Linda Reimer for 29 years of extraordinary dedication to the mission of junior achievement inspiring young people to strive for excellence God bless you, Linda. Thank you for this opportunity. I love you. We love you. And thank you for all you've contributed to our world. Thank you very much. And let's welcome back to the stage tonight's MC, Randy Beamer. Thank you. Thank you, Randy, and congratulations, Harriet. Uh, you deserve all of that. I do want to say a special thank you to Harriet, um, not because I'm a member of USAA, but <clears throat> I have a daughter <clears throat> who works at USAA and loves it, and I have a son-in-law who works at USAA, and <clears throat> it's really hard to say son-in-law. I'm not that old, but uh, he's a decent guy, and he has a pretty good job at USAA, and I know what they're... Uh, what incredible experience they get. And we're gonna move on, we're gonna have a lot of fun now. Junior Achievement is definitely making a difference by helping improve the quality of life through something I never had, financial literacy, workforce readiness, and the entrepreneurial education delivered by such wonderful positive role models. And we'd be remiss if we didn't take the opportunity to recognize the wonderful sponsors of tonight's event, and their support of junior achievement activities here in South Texas. I encourage you to show your enthusiasm as we recognize some of these sponsors. And if anyone is maybe related to any of those sponsors here, be, feel free to go ahead and share your enthusiasm in a contest. No, as we mentioned earlier, our presenting sponsor this evening is SWBC with <laughs> Thank you. 
It's about a six. We'll start with that. Our platinum sponsors are Endeavor. No booing. Okay. Three. Wow, the judges are tough. Catholic Life Insurance. H-E-B. USAA. And if you enjoyed the reception earlier, you can thank the reception sponsor, City. I just want to see if it's written up there. Also, our gold sponsors are C.H. Gunther and Son, which made the news today. Congratulations. Cooper Sotheby's International Realty. Valero Energy Corporation. Our silver sponsors are AVTS, Clear Channel Communications Foundation, News for San Antonio, WOAI TV, which graciously produced all the videos tonight. Bronze sponsors are Broadway Bank, Capital Group, Coca Cola, Coca Cola North America. You think there's a prize for this, don't you, Ed? Deloitte Consult, and there is. Delo Accountants are always, uh, you know, Deloitte Consulting. Ernst & Young. Frost Bank. Harlan Clark. Silver Eagle and the beautiful Crystal Eagle Award sponsor is Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. I want to thank all of tonight's sponsors. Thank you very much for doing that. And also, Junior Achievement benefits from incredible dedicated leadership of its board of directors. So at this time, we'd like to acknowledge all the members of the Junior Achievement Board of South Texas and the directors, both current and past members, if you could please stand and be recognized tonight. And these, these are your committed community leaders. They have enabled Junior Achievement to reach more than a million students Again, a big round of applause. I like the way they reluctantly stood up. Like, uh, okay. Junior Achievement's volunteers are also the heart of its mission, and those of you who have volunteered for Junior Achievement in the classroom know that it is an incredibly rewarding experience. And if there are any current or past volunteers, we'd like to applaud your effort and commitment to making a big difference in the lives of these young people, inspiring them to have a positive sense of the future, delivering a message of hope. And if any volunteers are here, current or past, if you want to stand up as well. Okay. Wow. Well, thank you. The most reluctant group right there. Give them a hand. Now, in the spirit tonight of honoring the three newest members who are being inducted into the San Antonio Business Hall of Fame, they needed some communication professionals. So um, we are opening the floor now to some collaboration and highlighting some of the work that you are helping. As is the case every year at this event, we have invited some talented JA students to join us here on stage to help introduce our Hall of Fame honorees. So please, if you could welcome to the stage our first co-presenter of the evening, a fifth grade junior achievement student at Hawthorne Academy, Zachary Abdichua! <laughs> Wow, great to see you, Zachary. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Beamer. It's so nice to be here with you. Well, let's start out with just an introduction. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself here. I'm 11 years old, and I am a business owner. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You are an 11-year-old business owner. Yes, sir. And I can tell you about it in a heartbeat. Here you go. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. You can eat some of that if you I want. Can, okay, good. <laughs> I am the proud owner of Zachary Avitua Party Rentals, <laughs> and I rent out party supplies such as bouncy houses, water slides, popcorn machines, cotton candy machines. We have anything you need for the occasion. I also have business <laughs> cards if you would like one. Why, why yes, thank you. Zachary of each of a party rental. Owner. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and, and this is all very impressive. 
I, I'm speechless. Not really. In doing some no, research... No, I am speechless. It's very impressive. <laughs> I missed my cue. I'm sorry. In doing some research, I learned that one of tonight's inductees also owned his own business as a young teen. He believes you always got to get on the train. I guess we both decided to get on the train early. You know, that's exactly what junior achievement is all about. Absolutely. My JA volunteer helped me to understand what it takes to succeed in the world of work so I can be successful in school, in work, and in life. You know, it's awesome. Oh, you got the stuff of the butter, didn't you? The yellow stuff. <laughs> this, pardon me, makes me wonder if you think our first laureate <clears throat> had a junior achievement uh, sponsor or, or a volunteer in his classroom when he was in school. What do you think? I'm not sure, but I do know Mr. J. Michael Bells is the president and CEO of Catholic Life Insurance. Under his leadership, Catholic life insurance assets have grown tremendously. But Mr. Bells is most proud of providing opportunities for people to excel and encourages his employees to give back. He is also very active in the community. Mr. Bells has raised over $100 million <coughs> in high-profile capital campaigns. $100 million, that is... That is. That is amazing, Zachary. That's amazing. But wait, that's not all. That's not all. There's more. <laughs> I can't forget to mention his patriotic spirit. <laughs> Mr. Bells proudly displays the largest American flag in the state on the side of his building at Cap... <laughs> on the side of his building at Catholic Life's annual Flag Day celebration. And that's a great example of getting on the train. You are right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Catholic School Sweepstakes, sponsored by Catholic Life Insurance. This is our fifth year in the sweepstakes, and uh, boy, has it gotten big. We uh, started off very small. The life of J. Michael Pells reflects the transformational fundraiser Michael created in 2007 to benefit Catholic education. It's a journey of extraordinary growth, starting from modest all-American means in East St. Louis, Illinois. Michael will tell you his upbringing resembled a very popular TV sitcom. <laughs> That's right, babe. I'm afraid this is a two-man job. Don't you have any one-man jobs I can do? <laughs> you can get lost. That's what you can do. <laughs> like Peaver Cleaver, Michael Bells was a good-natured and ambitious child, the son of an electrician and stay-at-home mom. Michael sold Kool-Aid as a kid, worked as a soda jerk in his uncle's pharmacy, and mowed lawns as a teenager while launching his own business, Michael Bells Lawn Service. Michael's father taught his son that a strong work ethic creates success, advice which turned out to be foundational to Michael's long-running leadership as the president and CEO of Catholic Life Insurance. If you think about it, uh, Catholic Life is about 100 years old, a little over 100 years old. Michael's been the chairman for 34 years. He's been chairman of Catholic Life for about a third of its existence. He's been able to keep the uh, uh, focus on growth, new products, et cetera, et cetera, without losing sight of his members. He's just a phenomenal guy, a real wit, just super creative. The highest level of ethics possible coupled with an immense intelligence. It's hard to combine those two qualities nowadays, but uh, Mike has more than combined it. He's mastered it. Michael arrived in San Antonio on an academic scholarship at St. Mary's University, where he played baseball and met his wife, Esther, whom he calls his best friend and his sounding board. They've been married since 1975. Together, they raised three children. Michael got his first taste of the insurance industry right out of college as an agent with farmers soon transitioning to Catholic life, where he's been ever since. Before taking the reins at the organization, Michael's career at the insurance giant included roles in a variety of departments, marketing, leasing, 
Personnel Director and the VP of Corporate Affairs. Through our life insurance products, we've helped moms and dads ensure that their family would be cared for in time of need. When Michael became the head of Catholic Life in 1984, the assets of this member-owned organization totaled $13 million. They've now climbed to $1.2 billion, making Catholic Life one of the top 10 fraternal insurance organizations in the country. It's almost as if people gravitate toward him. They want to be around him, they want to be with him, they want to work for him. I am very proud of him. Uh, he's someone that I trust, and someone who lives uh, with integrity his life, not only his personal life, his family life, but also his business life. He is a good friend and a great leader for us here in San Antonio. Charismatic, compassionate, and a creative out-of-the-box thinker, Michael Bells always stopped to pay it forward for others during his rise to the top. Serving on the boards of Christus Santa Rosa Hospital, University of the Incarnate Word, and the United Way. And that's just a snapshot of his dedication to civic engagement. Michael is credited with raising more than $100 million in capital campaign leadership roles, a success that's tapped into a reservoir of resourcefulness born during his youth in East St. Louis. My guess is people don't know much about Mike uh, in some respects because um, Mike is a very humble person, but you almost have to break out the thumb screws if you want to get information from Mike on the stuff he's done. 90% uh, of it I don't know, and then I find out about it after the fact from someone else who will say, my God, did you know that Mike Bells was the guy responsible for raising all that money for the retired priests at Casa de Padres? Well, he's the one responsible for getting the elementary school going over at St. Matthew's. And maybe people, they know him as a businessman, or they know him as a, a very kind person in, in a small circle, so when, but to see him leading a, a crowd He's fun to be with, and he engage, engages people very easily. And we have another celebrity here, Bishop <laughs> Gustavo. This is wonderful. Oh, <laughs> Two bishops in a dump truck. It, <laughs> it, it doesn't get any better than that. Humor and charm have served Michael well over the years, characteristics which have certainly served as blessings for Catholic education in Texas. The Catholic school sweepstakes alone has raised more than $8 million as a signature fundraiser for Catholic life insurance since its launch 11 years ago. Michael will tell you he's very proud of the team at Catholic Life and that he loves to ignite a spirit in people. 25 years ago, Catholic Life started hosting a Flag Day celebration at its headquarters in San Antonio to spread the values embodied by our great American symbol. When asked what lessons he wants to pass on to his children and grandchildren, Michael stressed it's the importance of paying it forward and to always remember there is a greater power that you didn't get here by yourself. And so it is for his commitment to compassionate service and his ability to navigate faith, family, and finance that Junior Achievement is proud to induct J. Michael Bells into the San Antonio Business Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. J. Michael Bells. Okay, we just made a deal. He's going to start selling life insurance for me. And I need to rent a popcorn machine for our next flag day, so... I've got to set this up here a little bit, if you don't mind. I've got some a special person that uh, we're going to send this through FaceTime, if you don't mind. Let's see here. Let me get myself situated. Well, how's everybody doing? Okay? <laughs> kind of waiting, huh? You waiting for the Spurs tonight or what, huh? Hey, was it great having NCAA here in San Antonio? Was that a smashing hit? It was awesome. 
I'd like to begin by thanking the uh, uh, Junior Achievement, the board. Uh, what a great group of individuals in the selection committee. I, I am very humbled in this distinguished award. Um, thank you, thank you very much. Um, it's a privilege to be up here with uh, two other honorees and uh, Kathleen Cooper, your family, congratulations. And uh, Greg Goff, congratulations to you as well. I think this is a, uh, quite an honor and to list a cast of characters. Uh, I use character with Charlie Amato, but not Gary or the rest of them, but uh, definitely it's a humbling experience to be with these great individuals. Your ambassadors, Linda, you should be getting all these awards tonight. I don't really know why we're up here. Uh, listen to the numbers that you have put together, you and your team, Veronica and your staff. It's phenomenal. And if you don't mind, one more time, let's give her a round of applause. She is a fantastic lady. I just, I love you. I, I've just got to know her through this whole event, but I'll tell you what, she, you know, I'm hooked on junior achievement and it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So thank you so much. You do a great job. You know, it's all about dreamers and uh, everyone in here that has participated and bought a table tonight and uh, through the year have been sponsors. Uh, you're fantastic what you've done for these children. Uh, seeing this young Zachary come up here and uh, can you imagine the opportunity for him and what the memory he'll have to be able to address 500 people in a room uh, and just gives that self-confidence and that's that's what it's all about and uh, congratulations to everyone in here and, and thank you for being sponsors this evening it's all about dreams uh, and I like to talk about some dreams if that's okay God has uh, blessed me in so many ways uh, let's face it timing is everything I am a uh, a guy from East St. Louis, Illinois, um, a small blue-collar community across the river from St. Louis. Uh, and my dream at that time was to get out of East St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> Things happen. Timing is important. If it weren't for my faith, opportunities, love from my family, friends, organizations, I would not be here. And I, I really appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Capturing opportunities, making good decisions, choices, celebrating victories. These are all learned things. These aren't just, just don't happen with leaders or, or anyone trying to achieve. We need to instill this on the children. They need mentors. They need champions. And I've had a lot of them along my way. I received an academic scholarship from St. Mary's University in 1971 that introduced me to this fantastic city of San Antonio. I, I thought I had, this was heaven compared to East St. Louis. Uh, I was fortunate to, to serve on the board then at St. Mary's for 18 years, and it was what a learning experience. 44 years ago, while I was at St. Mary's, I was taking COBOL and Fortran in programming. Pretty scary. I mean, my son would never believe that I was taking programming. Uh, Tommy Trillian introduced me to Catholic Life after two semesters, and I said, this is great. They need a programmer. He said, no, I think you'd do better in marketing. <laughs> So I began to work at, at Catholic Life Insurance in 1974. Their president, their board of directors had the faith in me to give me a chance. Uh, they believed in me, they were looking for youth. Uh, and today, the board that I have here today has just as much faith and they're a fantastic group of individuals. And I would like you to give them a big round of applause. They've all shown up. Uh, They've come from all over the place to be here tonight, and I, I respect that, and I thank you for that. I believe truly that if you surround yourself with good people, good things will happen. And to my officers and staff that are here, Scott, Barbara, Shanna, to name a few, I just, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the years that we've been together and what you've done for me and for Catholic Life Insurance. You've taken us from a level of being a good company to being a great company. This year, Catholic Life, Little Catholic Life on Loop 410, some of you are probably still trying to figure out where it's at, but we will pay out over $100 million in benefits to our life members, and uh, we're real proud of that, and this is uh, happening because of individuals like, like these folks. We've come a long way. All of us have mentors and champions in our lives, living directly or indirectly. People you look up to, people you trust. Presently, I'm fortunate to serve on some boards of people that I look up to and that I trust. And five of them are here tonight, Broadway Bank, under the leadership of David Boney, and Joe McKinney and Jimmy Gooch and the entire Achiever family. You guys are fantastic. You're the epitome of Community Bank. It doesn't get any better. University of Incarnate Word, the Sisters of Charity, Sister Kathleen, go watch her tonight because she'll be looking for your wallets when you walk out, but she's a good lady. <laughs> Crispital, uh, Christus Hospital System, the only not-for-profit, faith-based hospital in the city of San Antonio. United Way, Casa de Padres, 
My buddies are here tonight, the retired priest, and uh, I'm so proud of them. They're my card players. Uh, we, we, we play a lot of cards together, and they're good men. The board members of these organizations and many others where I've served in the past have been my mentors and champions, contributing to my education, my business career, and my life. To all of you, I say thank you. Thank you for allowing me to participate in your leadership discussions, your strategic planning, your visions, your innovations, your thoughtfulness, but never ever losing sight of the core values of integrity and honesty. I thank you. I'd like to introduce those sitting at my head table, or my table, kind of front table. This individual is the first person that I met when I came to this great state of Texas, imagining some, a warrior coming from East St. Louis, finding San Antonio. We had to find it on the map. We drove in here in my dad's Galaxy 500, and uh, I see this guy hitting golf balls towards one of the dorms, and it's Alan Strickland. Uh, he's a fantastic uh, friend, a fraternity brother. His dear wife is with him too, beautiful Sharon. So thank you guys for being here. <laughs> Tommy Galvin, a longtime friend, assistant coach of our son's baseball team. What a guy, and his beautiful wife, Sarah. Thank you for being here as well. <laughs> My spiritual leader, good hiking buddy, four-wheeling buddy, Father Larry Christian, Vicar General of the Archdiocese of San Antonio. <laughs> Hello, Larry. Well, Larry, I'm, you know, I'm, I try to be a good Catholic, but I still don't know what a vicar general is. I'll have to tell you that. <laughs> my dear wife, you know, what do you do? 43 years, this lady has been my best friend. She is my soulmate. She is my therapist. She gave up her career to raise three beautiful children. And, uh, and I love you and support, and you really support me. Thank you so much. You're a good lady. <laughs> my beautiful daughter, Jessica. Your great and wonderful husband, Tim, who blessed me with my first granddaughter, Julia. I just love her. There's a reason to come home every day from work. And Esther says, yes. Christopher, my favorite, very favorite oldest son. Okay. <laughs> You're great, Chris. You're a smart guy. And I have one other individual here, and I, I know we're not to belabor things, but I have to thank him, and he's not here. And I would ask it, uh, maybe you can help me on this one as well. It's my favorite youngest son. His name is Robert, who's joining us right now on FaceTime. Hey, Robert. He's here right now. You can see him, okay? It actually works, doesn't it? He's a Kadena Air Fair Space in uh, Okinawa, o Okinawa, Japan. Uh, Robert is a pilot in the Air Force, and he is a uh, 34th Fighter Squadron. What, Robert, what did you say? No, oh, thank you. Okay. He's, uh, you can even listen to him as well. He's with his squadron right now. These six young men are flying this new F-35, and I know that our country is in good hands. Keep in mind that their squadron has been away from their families, missing Christmas, Easter, birthdays, and in my son's case, his new beautiful wife, Lauren, who lives in Salt Lake City. Robert was married in December, only weeks before being deployed to Okinawa. So now he's enjoying a solo honeymoon in lovely Okinawa. <laughs> But you know what, folks? They stand ready to defend our country, to give up, and to continue to make sure we have our freedom and to make sure we can enjoy a dinner like we have this evening. And you know what? That one was for Robert. But what I'd like you to do right now is give a round of applause for all six of the men that are flying these planes right now. Thank you very much. All right, Robert? Is that okay? All right. Once again, thank you very much for this honor. Thank you. Oh. Give him a hand, J. Michael Bells and his son and his posse. As he's making his way. Congratulations. That was awesome. Incredibly eloquent. Thanks. That's amazing. I just have a couple of questions as he's heading back to his table. Uh, first of all, did you jumpstart your business career by selling that hair? That, that. I still have the picture. Ah, I would. And the mustache. I, I really related to that. Uh, one other thing, as a Catholic, did he just insult both the Vicar General and Sister Kathleen as a thief? And then the gambling card playing buddies and uh, 
I really like how you were able to introduce the Archbishop as Mr. Gustavo. I believe that was... You got some... Uh, yeah. I, I don't want to be, you know, with all the priests here and stuff. I don't want to be... Uh... All right, in the business world, a great team can make a big difference in determining your success. The team, as Henry Ford once said, if everybody's moving forward together, then the success takes care of itself. So that's why, again, we are extending our team up here, inviting our next co-presenter, next very shy person to the podium, a fifth grade junior achievement student at Leon Valley Elementary. Let's give it up for Luke Edda. <laughs> wow. Uh, Luke, great to see you. Now, when we first met earlier when you were uh, dressed a little differently, you were talking about your life. You mentioned that you were into robotics and science at your school. I sure am. Being a part of the science team is lots of fun, but it's also taught me a lot about STEM skills and innovation. Do you know what STEM skills are? Can you define innovation? Uh, well, I STEM, um, maybe uh, I could use a little help because it's been a, it's been a long day and STEM is, I, maybe you could help us out. I'd be happy to. <laughs> I learned in my JA class that STEM skills are technical skills related to science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Innovation is an improvement of an existing product or method. Yeah, i sure I knew that. I was just testing you. Kids. Well, our next laureate definitely knows the definition of innovation. And I bet he utilizes his STEM skills every day. Mr. Greg Goff, Chairman, President, and CEO for Endeavor, and Chairman, and CEO for Endeavor Logistics, is an energy producing empire headquartered here in San Antonio with a footprint that stretches all across the United States. Mr. Goff leads a Fortune 100 company to the stratospheric success. Did you know that Endeavor operates 10 refineries with combined capacity of 1.2 million barrels of product per day? That's 1.2 million barrels per day. Per day. So uh, what, when do you think innovative, when do you think he has the time to be innovative? Mr. Goff also supports STEM programs with funding and is always striving to make things better not only for Endeavor, but for the people he leads. When Greg Goff arrived in San Antonio nearly eight years ago as the CEO for what was then known as Tesoro, the share price of the company was trading at roughly $10. Fast forward to the summer of 2017, when the energy producing giant debuted on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with a new name, a new logo, and a fresh identity as Endeavor. Greg, as the chairman, president, and CEO of Endeavor, rang the opening bell. <laughs> Shares of Endeavor are now trading around the $100 mark. Everything we did was for only the people in the company. That's the most important thing you have to understand. The change was for everyone that works here today and everyone that will work here tomorrow. Teamwork and hard work have been foundational for Greg since his days growing up in Utah, whether it be as an all-state high school linebacker or at the family grocery store, where he started working at the age of 10. He grew up in a tight-knit family where everything centered around business. Greg says he learned on the job and early in life about the importance of treating others with respect, integrity, and commitment. He says he also learned about the critical value of responsibility after he was given the job of opening and closing the store as a seventh grader. When I was a young boy, I worked at, uh, for my uncle at a very, very young age, almost today would be uh, probably punishable by jail for as early as I started working, but the, uh, the thing that I learned to be fearless about by him was that I learned with responsibility that you could achieve many, many things. And when people have trust and confidence in you and give you an opportunity to do something and then you, you reach for that, that you learn 
actually to be fearless. Some of the people that are at this event will have seen the movie The Darkest Hour. Uh, and that particular movie was about an individual, which we all know, who became the Prime Minister of Britain at the time of World War II. And one of his quotes has been, never, never, never quit. And that's Greg. Greg gets on something and he never, never quits. He is what I would call a 360 degree leader. He is someone who pays attention certainly to his board and the people and the shareholders for whom he works. But he also looks uh, to the people who work uh, for him and he looks for the people who are on the front line of the company. He is constantly looking for data, looking for information about how to make things better. Greg's long career in energy started at ConocoPhillips in 1981. Three years later, he met his wife, Sylvia. Together, they have two sons and a granddaughter. Greg credits his professional success to his transformational education at the University of Utah, where he received his Bachelor of Science and Master of Business Administration degrees. His alma mater honored Greg as a distinguished alumnus in 2015. He serves on the National Advisory Board for the University of Utah's David Eccles School of Business, which houses the Goff Strategic Leadership Center. The Institute serves as an incubator for talented students by developing and empowering future leaders. Greg also serves on the board of the National Society of High School Scholars and personally provides 10 scholarships to the society in addition to several scholarships supported by Endeavor. His commitment to education was commended during a recent keynote to students at UTSA. Greg is proud, and I mean that sincerely, to support science, technology, engineering, and math education for high school students by personally funding grants and scholarship opportunities. Advanced mathematics and the sciences, they're not easy subjects to master. But I can assure you, it's worth every minute of your time. And you know why? Because STEM training teaches you how to solve problems. What might surprise people about Greg, particularly those who know him primarily as a high-powered CEO, is what a great listener he is and how much he cares about individuals. Greg is someone who moves very, very quickly. He makes decisions well, but he's always taking in new information. When he hears something that isn't the way he thinks it's gonna be, unlike a lot of people, particularly people in that position, Greg hears it, he stops and he thinks. His passion for making things right is, is an attribute that I think is, whether it be with the board or with the communities we work in, with the regulators, with the public, his communication is going to be the same. He'll tell a regulator the same thing he would tell you. Think about this. If it weren't for Endeavor, energy availability in America might be profoundly different. And without energy, we would not have a vibrant economy. Under Greg's leadership, Endeavor operates 10 refineries with a combined capacity of 1.2 million barrels of product per day and more than 3,200 stores marketed under well-known fuel brands including Arco, ExxonMobil, and Shell. At Endeavor, they use the phrase, go for extraordinary. Greg Goff certainly embodies that mantra as someone who is inspirational, aspirational, and transformational. And so it is for his passion for educating tomorrow's leaders and his unbending commitment to providing energy to America. That Junior Achievement is proud to induct Gregory J. Goff into the San Antonio Business Hall of Fame. Mr. Gregory J. Gaw. So it's a, 
it's a tremendous honor and privilege to be here tonight and I could thank everyone, but you know what? Anyone here who helps make a difference in anyone's life, no matter how small, deserves all the credit. And so I'm not gonna take any time to really thank anyone because everyone deserves the recognition for what they do. Because even the smallest thing can make a big difference in people. So what I thought I would do was maybe just tell you a couple stories about what our company can do to make a difference in people. Because we've heard great things tonight about Linda, about Charlie, Gary, the other people being recognized tonight. It's just, it's, it's actually fantastic because it has such a, it can have such a pro profound impact on people. But our company, I think what's, what's really important is that we want to have a place where people can feel good about what they do and where they can do what we say is, and that's just make a difference. And making a difference can be how you impact people, whether it be in STEM education or someone that you work with, whether it can be someone in the communities, someone in need. But I think that's one of the most important qualities of either an individual, and in our case, our company. So we, we started out, and some of you may say, why Endeavor? Because just a little bit of background, Tesoro is the first company in San Antonio to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange about a half a century ago. And last year, we made the decision to change the name of the company. And we did it because of the people. Because when we looked forward, we wanted to be able to create an identity of a place where people could come and look on how we do things. Not what we do, but how we do things. Whether it be the respect we have for each other, the integrity, that we pride ourselves on, on how we conduct business, how we look to the future and the things that we can do, how we can make a difference, how we can make a difference in the community in San Antonio, in Los Angeles, in Salt Lake, and everywhere that we have people that can touch the lives of other people. So we, we wanted to look at the company and we felt like it was important to have a, a new identity. We wanted to think forward and think about creating a place that people would look about how, how we worked in that. And like it said in the video, we have a belief in our company that we can go for extraordinary. And we can go for extraordinary in actually many, many ways, whether it be touching the lives of people or changing, impacting a community, we can make a big difference. And so one simple example is yesterday. I was in Salt Lake City, which happens to be where I grew up, but about three years ago, one thing about Salt Lake City is that in the, winter, in the winter months in particular, they have really poor air quality. And the, the uh, federal government has proposed regulations to help clean up air quality, and we could make a difference. We're a, we have a big impact on the Salt Lake uh, or the Utah economy with our business there, and we could, we had a, cou a couple choices. One choice is we could go in and, and comply with the, the law by kind of averaging our business across the entire country and we would have been, been in compliance. Or we could basically do the right thing and invest in the, our operations there to help improve air quality for all the people that live in, especially in the Salt Lake Valley. And one day about three years ago, I was sitting with the governor of Utah and he was, he was trying to convince me that we should look at this and try to help them out. And he actually didn't, it didn't require any convincing. All we, because at the end of the day, we could do things that would make a difference. And we chose as a company to spend almost a hundred million dollars to help clean up the air there and we didn't have to do it. But our company, that's what we believe in. We have something that we called shared value and we can have like the, the uh, video said, our stock price went from $10 to $100 in seven years, and that's fantastic. But what's really fantastic is all the other things that we've, our people have done, and it's everyone in the company to have a positive impact, whether it be in the San Antonio community, whether it be in, with STEM education, whether it be of how we engage with, the, with our customers and people that are important to our business. What we believe is that we can create value for everyone. 
and we can do that in many, many ways. And we're very focused on being able to do that. And so to be able to have the opportunity to be recognized, and I view tonight as more recognition for Endeavor than it is for myself because it's all of us, my fellow teammates, my wife that are with me here tonight and their spouses, but it's everyone in the company, over 15,000 people, that they make a difference every single day. And the most important thing is if you can just change and impact one person in a positive way, that's a tremendously important thing to be able to do, and we try to do it all the time. So I, re I really appreciate the recognition, and hopefully we can continue to have a very positive impact on all the people that we touch. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, Mr. Gregory J. Goff. By the way, again, I just want to give a shout out to all the stylists of the 1970s and those like us who uh, would like to destroy some pictures, but you look, you look marvelous. You look marvelous. All right. Now, also, haven't the young co-presenters here, haven't they been awesome and uh, able to talk? They, they can talk good without teleprompter or script in front of them. And how about one more? We have one more special co-presenter. Here is a third grade junior achievement student who will amaze you from Leon, Vela, Leon Valley Elementary, Bella, ha! Bella Adams! Wow, well, you know, it, it's uh, great to have you and your prop up here on stage, uh, Bella. It's wonderful to be here, Mr. Beamer. <laughs> So glad that you had junior achievement in your classroom. And that means, obviously, you've had time to think about a future career. And I know you're just getting your life started. But do you have, do you have any thoughts about what kind of career you might want to get into? When I think of my future, I know I want to have a family, but also a career. My dream is to go into real estate. So I'll be able to have a career and to make time for my family. Until then, I'm working on my networking skills. Wow, networking skills. You know, third grade, right? Yes. You know, when I was in third grade, I was trying to learn to ride my bike and uh, playing with dirt and stuff like that. And uh, I never thought about networking skills. And, you know, maybe that's kind of why I'm... I learned, it. I learned in my JA class Playing with friends is a great way to strengthen your networking skills. And guess what? Our aunt's laureate made lots of friends supporting the community. Her knowledge and love for San Antonio helped her make the right connections, too. I am very impressed, Bella, and it sounds like she has inspired you. She sure has. As I stated earlier, my career in real estate, Bella... Adams will help me to excel. Hopefully, I can inspire my family just like Kathleen Cooper has. Together, the Cooper family's dedication to helping people find the right homes has made the Cooper Sotheby's International Realty the success it is today. All the magazine covers over the years spotlighting her story reinforced the grace and elegance of Kathleen Cooper. Today's Texas Women in 2010, for example, published an article about her titled San Antonio Royalty, in which the writer heaped glowing praise upon Kathleen. Quote, Kathleen is considered the grand dame of San Antonio, so I'd prepared myself as if I were about to meet one of the Kennedys. To my great surprise, I met one of the most candid, warm, and endearing people ever. I quickly discovered the Grand Dame of San Antonio was actually a monarch of the heart. She's just the, the nicest, sweetest, the most loving, caring person that you, that you run across. People from all walks of life come up to me all the time and they say, we love your mother. I'd say if there was any one attribute I'd put to Kathy, certainly as a personality, she's a 
wonderful, attractive, beautiful person, but the fact that she just almost is a person you immediately trust when you first meet her, and I think that's one of the elements are good for you in business. Born and raised in San Antonio, Kathleen grew up in the Monte Vista neighborhood. She learned early in life from her father, Harry, the former president of Lone Star Beer, about the importance of community service and the joy of giving back to San Antonio. Lone Star was one of the largest workforces in San Antonio with roughly a thousand employees when her father reopened and ran the brewery after the prohibition. For many years, her husband, Charles, served as vice president of the brewery. And so Kathleen was always surrounded by big business influences and a long-running commitment to civic engagement, donating her time and raising money for treasured causes, the Junior League, the Battle of Flowers, and the Charity Ball Association. She looked at real estate as a continuation of her public service. She's a very, very caring individual. And so she's always trying to do whatever she can to help people uh, in one way or another. So that's her mannerism, it's her lifestyle, it's her, it's her calling in life. I think having the ability to know the community thoroughly in community service put her in a special position to do real estate because she knew the community, knew where things were and what people would want. I met Kathleen when we decided to move the company from St. Louis to San Antonio. And someone told me that she was a very good real estate agent. I called her and that turned out to be true. She was outstanding. She's interested in what you want. She's interested in satisfying you and your family. She is very professional. She knows what she's doing. She, it's obvious she cares a lot about people, and in her business, that's very important. Kathleen's grand entrance into the working world started in 1978 at the age of 53. She asked her son Charles if he might entertain the thought of starting a residential division of the commercial brokerage and development firm he founded in 1972, Cooper Realty Corporation. I actually tried to discourage her from getting into the business because she never really had a eight to five Monday through Friday job. And I told her, I said, Mom, you're, you don't understand residential real estate. It's a Saturday and Sunday job. It's, you know, there's a lot of weekends and a lot of times people will call you on Christmas Day saying they want to go look at houses in the afternoon. And she said, that doesn't bother me at all. Kathleen more than made up for her late start in the working world. In 2012, she received the San Antonio Board of Realtors Lifetime Achievement Award, using her charm and her connections to plant the seeds for one of the leading luxury real estate brokerages in South and Central Texas. Cooper Sotheby's International Realty generated $1.7 billion in sales from 3,000 transactions in 2017, with an average sales price of $546,000. The matriarch of eight great-grandchildren, 11 grandchildren, two daughters, and two sons. You're more likely to get Kathleen to boast about her family than her personal sales volume. Her sons, Rick and Charles Jr., both represent the brokerage in leadership positions, with Rick recognized in 2006 as the top realtor for San Antonio, an achievement earned by Kathleen numerous times before. Kathleen says she is grateful her husband got to see her career take off before he passed away in 1987 from cancer. She's 92 years old. She gets up and goes to the office every day, almost seven days a week. Uh, at night, when I'm getting ready to go to bed, she's getting ready to go out. You know, you know whether it's a bridge game or whatever else, she's, she's very social. She loves people. Uh, she loves San Antonio. And San Antonio loves you back, Kathleen. And so it is, for her years of committed public service and for transforming the real estate market in Central and South Texas, that Junior Achievement is proud to induct Kathleen Cooper into the San Antonio Business Hall of Fame.
you the big introduction too. Yeah, I'll go okay. Ahead. Okay. <laughs> and here now, and we're gonna make it. Uh, you can go ahead and read this. Okay. Kathleen is surrounded by her family tonight. Please welcome her grandson, Harry J. Cooper Jr., who will be accepting on behalf of Ka of Kathleen and the Cooper family. Mr. J. Cooper, come walk forward. <laughs> Give her a hand. <laughs> Thanks. Good evening and thank you again um, to the San Antonio Business Hall of Fame and of course, Junior Achievement. Uh, and, and just like everybody else said, I for sure, Bella, have your business cards on print. I've sent something to the marketing department to get you on board on Monday. I think she could sell a lot of houses, don't you? <laughs> I, think she, I think she's phenomenal. Uh, I've got to tell you that I've got to be the proudest grandson that's ever existed. Watching that film of my grandmother was incredible. Every bit of it was true. I know you hopefully caught what my uncle said, but it's 100% accurate. I wasn't going to give, Mimi, I was not going to give your age away because I think that's a cardinal sin. But she is in the office virtually every day, about seven days a week. Um, the thing that, many things make my grandmother special, make Kathleen special, but certainly her work ethic and really her standard for herself um, is what sets her apart all the time. I think one of the keys, obviously, we've heard tonight about junior achievement is that mentorship for young people is very important. And I'm the great benefactor of having an incredible mentor. And I would say that uh, on behalf of my entire family and Kathleen and my grandmother. Um, it's certainly made me who I am today, her influence and uh, her giving tirelessly to the community, to her family, of course, to her church, and then, of course, to our business has made all the difference in the world. We've been in business now 46 years, and I can assure you without her influence, we would not be where we are today. Family is paramount, and we've learned that family translates from us being together as the Cooper family into our whole entire organization. Thankfully, now our family is 350 people strong all over the state, and it's made us who we are, um, and will continue to make us grow uh, in the future. Um, I have to say also that uh, one of the things that makes Kathleen who she is today is again her love of this community, San Antonio in particular, but also the great state of Texas. And I know she gives credit to all those around her. I think it's been said about some of the other laureates tonight, but she just doesn't take credit for what she does to give back. And so thank you all so much for this opportunity to recognize her and give her this honor because she completely deserves it. Mimi, love you. And thank you again for everybody tonight and to the rest of the laureates. Thank you, Junior Achievement. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Kathleen Cooper and her entire family. And Charlie Amato trying to steal the spotlight. Crazy Uncle Charlie. Congratulations again to all of tonight's laureates. As we end the evening, we have one last little bit of joy for you, something special. Closing out our tribute to these new inductees and volunteers, please welcome, again, Jada Proctor, an eighth grade student at Judson Middle School. Jada Proctor.
what you take for what you're giving And if you bet on love, there's no way you'll ever You did great. You want to help me read this? You want to help me? You can read this and just smell it, okay? When they, when they get... Jada Proctor, everybody! Okay. Now, you didn't know I was going to bring you up here, but I, I have trouble reading, so if you just want to read that, I think it might work better. It's now time for you to, it's now time for each of you to stand up for JA. By completing the pledge card at your table, you are ensuring that today's JA students will become the leaders of tomorrow. Pledge cards can be dropped off in baskets located at the back of the ballroom with the JA staff member. That's right. And one more thing. Let's bring out our presenters tonight. Our presenters tonight, if they could come out. <laughs> Weren't they outstanding? And you're going to stand by him too, right? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the future business leaders of tomorrow because of what you're doing tonight. Thank you very much for coming and good night. Okay, go ahead and bow. <laughs> you did awesome. Drive safely, don't make it on the news tonight.